What's up guys? Welcome to episode 5 of Natural Hair for Beginners. This week I'm going through all of the natural hair lingo and I'm going to break down the ingredients that you'll find in natural hair products to help you understand what you should be avoiding and what you should be looking for in your natural hair products. And this week I've got a special freebie vibe going on. So if you stay till the end of this video, I'll show you what I'm giving you for supporting me this far in the series. So first of all, I'm going to go through the list of like shorthands and lingo that you'll find in all the natural hair posts. Sometimes you might be seeing like abbreviations or acronyms that you are not sure about the meaning. So I'm going to go through the most common acronyms and abbreviations and things like that. As usual, I've got my iPad here just so that I make sure that I've got all of the topics covered for you guys. First of all, AVC. You might see this quite often in a lot of natural hair posts. That simply stands for apple cider vinegar. Then we've got BC, Big Chop. We spoke about the Big Chop last week. Banding, which is a styling technique to inhibit hair shrinkage. CG is a curly gown. Clarifying, the process of cleansing and removing product buildup. Co-wash, cleansing your hair using the appropriate conditioner instead of a shampoo. Finger coiling, rotating small sections of wet hair around your finger to create coils. I've done a video on finger coiling. If you just look into my past videos, it should, it's quite recent. Heat damage, damage done to your hair from heat appliances. No poo. <laughs> That is a non-foaming, non-detergent cleanser. Pineappling is just putting your hair up into a little ponytail on top and letting your hair pineapple on the top. It's quite cute. Pre-poo. Oils, conditioners, and other substances applied to the hair before shampooing. So you could use apple cider vinegar as a pre-poo because it will just cleanse and rinse your hair and get all of the gunk and stuff out. Protective styling. Hair cells that protect the ends of your hair from dehydration and damage. Sealing. Applying a natural oil to help lock in your moisture. Shrinkage. The reduction of the visual length of your hair. So my hair is actually like past my boobs. But when I let go, it's got that young shrinkage in it. Wash and go. Styling by applying product to wet hair and allowing it to air dry or diffuse. So those are just some of the natural hair lingo and terms that you might be seeing now that you've started your natural hair journey. Now I'm going to go into ingredients. Um, this is very important because you want to know what you're putting in your hair because certain substances can dry out your hair. Some things can be really bad and negative for your health as well. So you want to look at what's in these products and make sure that you're not having any of the dirty, naughty stuff. So I'm going to go through the ingredients and then I'm going to show you the synthetic options and then the natural options. And obviously, at, through all of these, you're going to want to go for the natural options because natural is always better. All right, so I'm going to have a little chart up here that shows some examples of the ingredients that fall under synthetic and natural. And those are the things that you want to look out for on your product ingredient list. First ingredient is surfactants or surfactants. Surfactants? Surfactants. <laughs> so these are agents that foam up when they come into contact with liquid um, and it helps lift dirt and grease from your hair. They act as detergents, emulsifiers, and foaming agents. And they're mostly found in cleansers and shampoos, but some conditioners also have surfactants, surfactants in them as well. So I'm gonna chat a little bit about synthetic surfactants. So, and they're also known as sulfates. So synthetic surfactants have a negative reputation because they strip the hair of its natural oils or sebum, which is the name for natural oils, which can lead to dry hair. And it can also cause skin irritation. So that's why you wanna Stay clear from synthetic surfactants. And then I've got the list of those ingredients over here. There are probably lots more. These are just the ones I could find on the internet for this video. Natural surfactants. So these are gentle cleansers for the hair and the skin. And it does not remove all the sebum from the hair and leaves your hair feeling less dry. So obviously you want to go for the natural option because it's not going to dry out your hair as much as the synthetics will. So basically you want to look for things that are sulfate free. So that will mean that it has none of those bad things in it. Moving on, emollients or moisturizers. So the main purpose of emollients is to make your hair or skin softer. So synthetic emollients, when applied to the hair, it creates a film around the strand which softens it and it prevents moisture from being released from your hair. So if you've got low porosity hair, you're gonna want something like that that's gonna stop moisture release. But it can also make it difficult for moisture to get in because over time there's gonna be a product buildup because that film is just gonna get thicker and thicker around your hair and that can eventually suffocate the hair. 
so you'll have to be using a clarifying shampoo every second wash or so just to remove that film remove that gunk from your hair and just make sure that your hair is staying healthy and not being suffocated some of these ingredients can also cause allergies now we're moving on to natural emollients so natural emollients are naturally found in nature and are easily absorbed by the hair they count as natural oils and butters um, and they can cause some buildup. however it takes much longer to form a film around the hair and therefore it won't suffocate your hair as quickly as a synthetic one will. So if you're using natural emollients, you want to go for a clarifying wash every four to six weeks, just to make sure that you're getting rid of whatever gunk has built up. Then we're going to move on to humectants. So a humectant is a hygroscopic substance. They have the ability to attract and retain moisture by delaying evaporation. They will keep the hair moist and hydrated for longer. So synthetic humectants can also form a, strand, form a film around the strand. So you want to avoid that again because it's going to suffocate the hair and avoid other moisture from getting into the hair. Natural humectants increase the hair's level of hydration without creating the film. So of course you want to go for your natural humectants. Moving on, emulsifiers. So these are ingredients that have the ability to blend ingredients that don't usually mix together like oil and water and it is also able to soften the hair and make your hair nice and luscious. So synthetic emulsifiers are byproducts of petrole petroleum and hydrocarbon and they create a seal on the hair which builds up and prevents moisture absorption. So if you want to go for your natural emulsifiers they can be found in nuts, berries and leaves. So all of your nut oils, your berry oils, those type of things that's what you want to go for. And then we've got preservatives. So preservatives are used to protect your hair products from bacteria and fungi and extend their shelf life. They are also known as parabens. So now when you see a product that says paraben free, it might not have the shelf life that a product with parabens will have, but it's a bit healthier for your hair. Here's why. Because with synthetic preservatives, some are considered harmless, but parabens have recently become the concern for increased risk of breast cancer. So I didn't know that you could get breast cancer from what you're using on your hair, but apparently it's a real thing. So you want to avoid anything that's got parabens in and protect your boobs. <laughs> Natural preservatives. So the shelf life won't be as extended as synthetic preservatives, but there's no risk of developing breast cancer. And to be honest, that's a win in my book. Yes. So go for paraben free guys. It's the right thing to do. Proteins. So proteins strengthen and provide flexibility to your hair. They can be very useful to damaged colored and high porosity hair because they fall in the cracks and the holes in your hair um, and this will help strengthen your hair making it softer. Proteins also keep the hair hydrated for longer and they can be found in shampoos, conditioners and deep conditioners. When you do use proteins as a treatment you want to always follow it with a moisturizing conditioner. All right synthetic proteins these are chemically modified and there are concerns that it causes irritation and asthma. So just think about that. Look at what the ingredients are for synthetic proteins and try to avoid those because you might have an allergic reaction to it. Shit happens. Natural proteins are much better for the hair, but vegetarians and vegans might want to look out on the ingredient list because collagen is usually obtained from cattle, which would make the product non-vegan and non-vegetarian, basically. So that is everything I've got on hair lingo and ingredients. I hope that you found this really informative and helpful. When you go shopping next time, look at the list and look at the products and see what dirty ingredients these products have in them and make sure you're buying the products that are all natural and doing the damn things for your hair. Now, because you made it this far in the series and this far in this episode, you are getting a freebie from Nadine Naturally. Yay. So I've created a PDF downloadable document that, you, that has all of this information in that I have just shared with you guys. So all the information on the ingredients and the ingredient lists, the explanations of the synthetic and the natural and what you should go for and what you should avoid. And this PDF also has some lines so you can make some notes at the end of each section for any ingredients that you find while you're doing your own research you can add it to this pdf the link is going to be in my bio i'll just put it as natural hair freebie so you guys can go ahead and download that and yeah i hope you guys really enjoy it let me know if you've got any feedback on this episode or on the freebie and let me know if you guys want more freebies because i really enjoyed making it and i'm really enjoying doing the series so please let me know what you want to see next and please keep messaging me i love getting the messages from you guys asking for help, asking for advice. I love seeing the journey that you guys are on with your natural hair. So yeah, 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my YouTube channel for product reviews. And yay, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Awesome. See you guys next week. Bye.